Welcome everyone to the OC Show episode 8 of the season 3, that is the summer edition. We are back after uh, a long break, actually uh, more than a month, and this was uh, actually due to all the world tour events we had with uh, with Timothy. So I'm Truthman from Overclicking TV, and tonight uh, we have been joined by one of our guests, Bill Zoid from UK. How are you doing? Uh, fine, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, we have uh, Timothée Xiala that is doing all the production, the production from our studio in Taipei. How is it going, my friend? Since hey actually two weeks ago that we were uh, together at the studio. Oh, very good. And uh, it seems I have a plane on Sunday to, <laughs> to come by the other way around. So uh, doing very good. Uh, I've been very busy the last week, so I'm a little bit tired. Maybe you can see that. But yeah, looking forward for the show. Well, that's gonna be a nice show. Uh, as I told you, we have been away from the uh, from the from the podcast for a while. Uh, this was due to all the events we had. Uh, we won't do a complete review of everything that we did, uh, but just to speak a little bit about the world tour, uh, we did five out of the seven events yet, and there's two more events coming. Uh, Timothy, do you have any extra news that we can actually share with people right now for the two last stop? Um, yeah, so we are looking right now seriously at Indonesia for an extra stop. And after that, we are going to start planning the final. But the final being uh, near the end of the year, uh, hint the last month of the year, uh, we still have time for that. So for now, it's still quite relaxed. Uh, we also actually started preparing for 2017. Okay, come on. We are just, just in July 2016 and we're already preparing for next year. Well, yeah, well, next year we're planning something like 10 events. Um, so it's going to oh, be a lot oh, of preparation. Yeah. So better we start up front, you know, when you have to book venues. Uh, there's actually some venues for next year which have a closing date for booking already in October this year. So it's very important to do that up front. Well, that's going to be super interesting. And as I said, our guest for tonight is Bill Zoid. Uh, he lives in UK. Uh, you're from Czech Republic. So you actually moved to UK not that uh, not that long ago, actually. You actually wanted to uh, to push that on the uh, on the Reddit overclocking team and uh, and all this for all of you guys joining us on the live chat. Welcome, uh, welcome to Milk Mick LT. Um, I think you're from UK because you said it's like almost 2 a.m. for you. And we have Neil from France, the God Eater from the US, uh, and Nitro WV and Sir Dale Zulu Zulu. Yeah, and guys, uh, the uh, truth. Uh, I'm actually sorry, yep. I'm interrupting you. They use they just got a small issue with the audio. Something crashed, uh, so I just fixed it back. <laughs> so I think there was some weird sound on the intro. So I think we missed a part of uh, Bill Zoid's intro introduction. Uh, sorry, so. We just have to basically do so it So let's again. go back to it. So <laughs> Very quick, just briefly about you. Let's go back to the of the OC Show Season 3. <laughs> no, we got the intro. It's just Bill Zoid. We, we missed half of what Bill Zoid was saying. <laughs> After he says so, he was uh, yeah, moving to the UK. So, Bill Zoid, you're, you're from Czech Republic. You now live in UK. You're the captain of the uh, Overclocking Reddit team. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have a lot of uh, well, we're gonna have an interview with you after. So actually, you you guys on the live didn't miss that much because we will be talking a little bit more about that in the last uh, topic of today. Uh, the few topics, as I said, were um, the like it or not, uh, all the news that we want to discuss and that uh, you know make our days or sadden our days in the past weeks. Uh, online competition update, everything that is going on on OCE Sports, uh, the latest hardware that we missed or will be uh, launching in the next few days. Of course, the RX 480 uh, topic, this is a quite hot topic lately uh, because it's just launched and there's a lot of challenges, especially with the power gate issues. I'm gonna uh, deep, uh, deep dive a little bit more into this. And of course, the interview with you, Bill Zoid, before we uh, pack up for this eighth episode. So let's do it. Um, news for the week. Bill Zoid, do you have uh, a news you want to, to share or you know discuss for, for, for this week? Wow. Something that, mostly... that came through your mind. Well, there's the RX 480. I'm way too much into this hardware thing, so yeah, I've just basically been messing around with the RX 480, and that's been the end of it. So, well, uh, look here, because that's going to be one of the big topics for tonight. Uh, Timothy, what would be your news that you like it or not like? Uh, what I liked actually this week, uh, well, it's like that. It's, uh, something that uh, sparked my interest is, uh, you know, uh, we've been talking a lot about maybe uh, 
Intel having sort of missed uh, the transition to, to mobile a little bit and still trying to catch up, right? Um, so today there's been an announcement that Intel is working now with BMW to bring uh, Intel chips inside cars uh, with the hint to, uh, you know, uh, self-driving driving vehicles just like Tesla is already doing. Uh, but here was the Intel inside kind of label to it. Um, so that was uh, the news for the day and I, and I thought that was kind of uh, something interesting. Um, what is also interesting in that news is that uh, they are partnering up with uh, that company is called Mobile Eye. And uh, so those guys are going to uh, kind of sync up together, you know, and trying to work out uh, a solution. But what is interesting also, and what is a little bit scary, is that there's nothing going to be happening before 2021. Uh, if you know that Tesla already has a driving car nowadays uh, that can drive pretty much by itself, of, it had a little accident. Well, even though there was an accident. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I ago, mean, <laughs> it's a it's an assistive uh, automatic drive, right? So you still have to pay attention, but it kind of does most of the things still detection and things like that, um, change lanes. But here they say there's nothing before 2021, so that leaves so much more time for uh, the competition to also come up with a good solution. We have uh, rumors, you know, about Apple also doing cars, which we haven't seen anything about that. So uh, it's very interesting, and this is uh, been going on. Apple doing cars has been going on for like at yeah, least forever. two years. Just like Apple doing TVs, you know. Uh, <laughs> it is uh, this cool article from Forbes. Uh, it's actually funny because so they, they use, uh, they compare a little bit of everything that is going on right now with all that self-driving kind of thing. So they're also talking about the uh, NVIDIA with NPX and things like that. So it's a, it's a cool write-up from uh, Forbes. So if you guys are into uh, anything automotive and anything about uh, the future of uh, cars, uh, check that article out. It's at Forbes. It was published actually uh, yesterday or not today, this morning. So yeah. So well, I think the press conference from Intel was last uh, last Friday because that was actually day off in Canada for Canada Day, and I remember that that was the only reason why I didn't did not watch it because that was too early in the morning. So we're still having some issues with the sound truth. It seems uh, it keeps on crashing for some reason. It's back now, but yeah. So every time wow. you crash, I will just do you a sign truth and we just do a little break and start the thing again. We keep going, I guess. And I will patch up the, the replay for you guys without those cuts. I think that would be the, that's the only thing I can propose at this point. Uh, because really you, strange. you, Timothy, you can hear us, right? I, uh, no, I cannot hear you when it crashes. Actually, I have to uh, stop that audio thing we use for the big sake and just start it again. So, um, yeah, no idea what's going on there, but yeah. <sighs> Well, that that's that's you know that's the the beauty of going live. At least we don't have Windows 10 updates right during the live. Yeah. Well, you guys will see it on the chat as soon as there's an audio thing. No need. What is going on there? <laughs> <laughs> well, on my side, the the news from today, from uh, from this week was I did receive like I think that was episode six or five. I talk about to you guys about this um, the rocket Daily Die two. So there is a Daily Die mate from Der Bauer, uh, that is. Um, one of the tools and actually received mine that is like these uh, two pieces that was on Kickstarter and uh, I got like the the complete package for it so as you can see that's uh, something you can use to uh, remove the IHS uh, from the CPU and you can actually put it back in with the the small extra pieces that they managed to do um, because there was actually that many people backing up the, the, the product so I received it I haven't tested yet uh, I don't <laughs> have uh, M much time to be honest, so I will uh, try to uh, give it a try once I uh, gonna get the CPU and I want to do some uh, overclocking. Maybe, maybe in the next few weeks because we will uh, have another event quite soon. Um, on the other hand, I want to talk so about some like the news. I did not l actually I like the news, but I don't like why I like the news. Um, <laughs> this is about these guys. But that doesn't mean yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. I like this news, but I don't like why it, this is this is happening. So there's these guys, uh, this uh, famous uh, YouTube streamer uh, that streams that stream CS:GO matches, and they were they got caught on promoting CS:GO gambling websites, and so where you can like exchange skin for um, you can gamble with skin and so on. So this is like virtual money you gather and so on. The issue is these guys were saying like, oh yeah, we found this awesome website and oh my God, I would just want like $13,000. That's awesome. 
Well, it turned out that the guys owned the website and the complete <laughs> system was rigged when they did the video and everything was completely fake. And this is something we know just from today because actually four days ago, no one knew about that. And that's one of the, I can't remember the two guys because they did like H3, H3, H3 and someone else. Yeah, and on the call that that two guys find out uh, the um the root the, that the the two youtuber i think that's a uh, uh, Psy uh, syndicate and tim martin they were actually like they created the site just for this and it's like my god like this is well this is not edicts first and the second thing is well you have a lot of things like this that is happening on the csgo scene with the skin and so on and there's a lot of drama going on because Valve is not doing anything for that. Well, in a smaller scale, there's a lot of issues like this in the hardware world, hardware world as well. Um, this is why most of the reviews, when people um, get a sample, they are actually uh, obliged by the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission in the US, to disclose that they have uh, what they did receive in compensation for, for the thing. So let's say Don't that you already need a website permits anyway to do that kind of stuff. For gambling, draws. actually, yes. Yeah. For gambling, you're not supposed to promote gambling to anyone that is underage. And the big yeah. issue with the CSGO thing is that the, that's kids. They're like, using that's, skins. Like years old. So, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the big thing which they're, they, they were trying to get away with was that it's skins, so it's not currency, mm. so it's not gambling. Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, it's, it's well, a virtual so, thing. So somebody has and... to... Yeah, yeah, technically not gambling because you're not using currency, but the fact that you can switch a skin into currency in seconds, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit like gambling with bitcoins. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not real money, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very strange. Uh, but anyway, I think, yeah, the big problem, like uh, like it was say on the chat, is the, the fact that they lied, right? The disclosure of not saying the, yeah, yeah. not being honest straight from the start, just say it's your site, there's no... What's the point of? Well, like, nobody would not. go on your own freaking site after you just acknowledge that it's yours. Yeah. Like the the first one is you don't disclose that it's yours. This is wrong. It's like you get shit ton of hardware and you're not disclosing why on from who or for what purpose, and and you call that like a honest review and actually it's not honest at all. It it can be you no know, independent in a way, but you still have to disclose that to receive something, and this is completely wrong for them because they own the freaking site. And the second thing that is not right is they are promoting gambling to underage people. Whatever the, the law is, like I, I think in the US it's 21 years old. I think in France it's like 18. Uh, so so yeah, you can always say, and this, this is going to be a big issue because that's on YouTube. That's a gray zone and that's all white. So depending on the yeah. country you are in, it's not the same rules that apply. And this is why it's a gray zone as well. Yeah, so you know. <laughs> Well, I hope that lows, then. <laughs> I just hope that this kind of stuff, like this, is shady, right? It's it's okay. It's borderly legal, but still, it's like, oh yeah, you work from home and win that twenty k a year, like twenty k a week, and you can get rich in no time. What the fuck? That sounds like a scam. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, well, that was the news that I like, but I don't like why I like it. <laughs> news of the week. <laughs> Big shout out to you guys on the live chat. There's a lot of guys. Ramzik Fatality, NX, and DS Promolo. Oh, damn it. DS Promolo, Lair Meow. And I should stop trying to say the name of the guys on the live chat. That's going to be tricky. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, updates for the competitions. Uh, Timote, what are the competitions going on today? There's uh, uh, actually a lot. The Team Cup, the, yeah, the team cup is going on for, for the summer again. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff going on, and like you say, the the team cup I think here is the the key uh, the key competition to happen this summer. Uh, so every year, uh, as you know, we have two major competitions at Eshtaibat. We have the the country cup, which is kind of the world cup of the nations of overclocking against each others, and uh, we have the team cup, which are all the teams at Eshtaibat um, all. Um, versus each other. Uh, the Team Cup this year uh, is pretty cool because it uh, features uh, so five different um, sub-competitions. Uh, there's a whole news about it at, um, at OC Esports, so you can check the news section and read everything about it. Uh, there's already 33 teams that are competing in this one. Um, Warp 9 Systems, which is currently rank one, uh, won the, con uh, the Team Cup last year. 
Um, so those guys are the guys to beat this year. Uh, we also have, of course, right now some some extremely closed uh, challengers like Overclock.net, and I'm pretty sure we'll see some other teams like Overclockers.com or, uh, or maybe even classic plat- classic platforms uh, coming up there. Because for the team cup, you you need to not have just uh, the latest gear or the or the most powerful gear. You're also looking for a vari- variety of gears, right? So, for example, uh, you have a stage here, a sub-competition one is on current generation, the other one is on modern generation, so that we are talking about uh, hardware from uh, about like uh, modern, like two, three years ago. Uh, legacy, everything that is old, and uh, vintage, uh, everything that is vintage, not like 70 years old vintage, because we don't have that yet. It's but like old, <laughs> but not enough to be called old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have the dog pile, which is everything, the, uh, the guys that um, prepare the competition uh, couldn't really classify in anything. Um, Shoot out to the guys that do that competition. Those are the guys from the Community Competition Task Force, the CCTF. And uh, I've been told they are up to something next. Uh, there will be some cool competition coming up with even some prizes, I hear. Uh, so that would be another thing going on this summer on an, an extra to the Team Cup. But if you're into a, in a team, you should definitely check that one out. Um, other competition going on at the moment, we have the Rookie Rumble, number 33, so that just started July 2nd, already 63 overclockers in there, nothing changed from the concept, it's all for the rookies, uh, people that just started overclocking, it's very simple and easy, we have the same for AMD as well, so if you're into AMD CPUs, uh, there's a chance here as well. Uh, to win some stuff and uh, as usual for both we got some prizes so some, there's some G-Skin memory um, for AMD but also some G-Skin memory for uh, the Intel competition I forgot to mention that and I'll prove it to you on that page here it's some uh, G-Skin Trident Z DDR4 16 gigabits so hey if you need an upgrade of memory you might want to be a rookie and if you're not a rookie, we've got some other things for you. If you're a novice, we have the novice nimble number 10. This is a team-based competition for novices only. Uh, as usual here, some strong teams there, overclock.net. Cockatland is not there, but I'm sure they will catch up very soon. PC Games Hardware, uh, all those teams are big teams uh, from Europe and the US uh, slash Canada. So if you guys are, yeah, novices, check it out. Um, there's a lot of other competitions going on as well. Uh, we have uh, the Skylake Pi, uh, Pi 5G, the Haswell Pi 5G challenges. So those are just uh, ongoing challenges for the whole year. And uh, the division stopped and they will start again uh, at the start of August. So there's a little break here, nothing, nothing to say about that. The results haven't been announced here for the round two, but uh, this, uh, my little finger says it's soon to, to come. Interesting. So that's going to be in the next OC show that will be on uh, yes. recorded on YouTube next week, right? Uh, yes. So, so next week I will be traveling to Europe. Uh, so I will try to record that show hopefully uh, before the end of this week so I can publish it next week. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, actually, the, it's crazy the amount of traveling that we are, uh, we are having. And this is the reason why uh, we are catching up today on a lot of uh, hardware. Uh, hardware news that we might have missed in the OC show. Um, of course, the GDX 1080 was launched. Uh, well, that was uh, that was fun. That was actually massive. The 1080 and the 1070 were launched. Uh, 1070 was launched around Computex time, and the 1080 was launched just before Computex. This is something usually uh, NVIDIA is always doing it, launching just before Computex to get all the news out just before uh, anyone else can launch new stuff. And uh, yeah, so the third part of this, the 1060, is remote to be launched in two days from now. So actually on July the 7th, mm-hmm. uh, that's be that uh, where we will have all the reviews out and everything. I'm not sure that's going to be available in shop at that time, but that will be like the paper launch. So that's uh, something that people do. They, oh yeah, this is what we can have, but you have to wait two <laughs> weeks to buy it. It's coming, it's coming, but not yet. It's like, oh, wait for like it. the 1080. With, with yeah, yeah, the 1080 was the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And then there's not much stock, and then the price goes back up, back to the price of what it used to be before for a top cup. <laughs> <laughs> so the the rumor says on the 1060 that uh, there will be there is supposed to be no SLI, but this is just a rumor. 
Uh, NVIDIA doesn't announce anything for SLI yet. Uh, the reason people think there's no SLI support is because there's not the like the pin on top of the card to plug the SLI bridge. And on the 1070 and the 1080, they were pushing that high to have like this special SLI bridge that is high bandwidth, something, whatever. Uh, so it's like, it's weird if they pushed the bridge to be very important and then provide SLI without any bridge. So uh, I do personally believe that they won't allow SLI for it just to not eat on their margin for the next card. So if you buy two cheap 1060, you have higher than the one 1080 or higher than one 1070. I, well, SLI makes less and less sense again because the the, the power that can be the, done by the, uh, by, the, by the VGA is actually quite high already. And the, actually most of the game doesn't need it. I can't wait to have Quake Champions to see if that will be like kicking out the market again. Um, Bilzeid, what do you think? Do you think you're gonna get one after the uh, the 480? Uh, 1060? I don't really do NVIDIA stuff, <laughs> so I <I've, laughs> uh, yeah, don't really have plans for one right now. Uh, and uh, plus I have a backlog of other graphics cards, which are actually NVIDIA's, but they're all like 500 series and, and older, so yeah. <laughs> well, you still have a lot of, to, a lot of card to abuse. Um, yeah, uh, I need so, to test that as well. <laughs> yeah, to finish on the 1060, it's uh, based on the GP106, not the same GPU as the 1080 and the 1070. That's a, a lower end one. It's supposed to be around 250 USD. Uh, that's about the same price as the uh, the 480 from AMD. So basically, they're trying to compete against each other. Uh, we will see if we have once again this memory thing drama that happened on the on the previous one. Unless and, uh, they're cutting the chip. Unless they're cutting the chip again, that should be fine. Because the problem on the 970 was that they cut it up wrong and they cut off part of the memory controller. Well, wrong. They, I guess they yeah. were. No, they, 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 they found out that. Oh, it we was an accident. <laughs> we yeah, totally didn't like, mean to. Oops, I just blew up 10, 10k chips that we have to use and sell anyway. <laughs> uh, talking about 10k chips that we have to sell for a high price, uh, Titan P, so the Titan card based on the Pascal GPU, the same one as the, the, the 1000 series. Supposedly, rumors again, 50% more powerful than the 1080. This will be massive. If this is actually true, this will be super massive. Uh, I will. I can't wait to see how the 1080 um, on design by the, by the manufacturer will fight against the Titan P because the Titan, as always for all the Titan, Titan, uh, Titan, Titan X and all that, manufacturer were not allowed to modify it. So they will they will always have to rely on the reference um, a reference PCB. So this is where like sometimes, no even the Titan X and the 980 Ti. A lot of uh, of the overclockers use the 980 Ti because you can have modified PCB for it. Uh, that was the main reason for it. Uh, don't forget this is only rumors. So until uh, until next time until actually. Uh, it's supposed to launch at Gamescon, so that's going to be mid, uh, mid-August. mid So we'll see uh, mid-August if this is true and what to expect from it. And actually, a week before, we can expect leaks as well. Um, the launch of the 480, uh, we just talked a little bit about it. Uh, the 470 and the 460 have been announced, but they are not released yet. Um, the 480 and the 470 are... Uh, the 480 is based on Polaris 10, while the 470 and the 460 is based on Polaris 11. So for now, we don't know exactly what's going to be, uh, like, all last the details I for heard, it. Last I heard, the 470 is Polaris 10, unless I don't remember something. Really? I mean, Maybe I'm yeah, just... Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm always I think 460, I, 460 is supposed to have no, P, uh, no, no extra power connector, and that's supposed to be 11. And then 470 is supposed to be a cut-down version of 10. Because, yeah, I mean, there was an apparent rumor uh, recently going around that Polaris 10 in the 480 wasn't the full chip, but that turned out that somebody just was misreading the block diagram. So, yeah. <laughs> Someone misreading something, and this is actually how all the power gets we started. We got news! <laughs> <laughs> so, oh yeah, we got something to talk about for summer. That's going to last for at least three weeks. <laughs> so, yeah, actually, um, I need to, to double check. Maybe you're right on, on that one. Anyway. Yeah, where are uh, we'd have to wait anyway to have the cards in hand to test and have the real uh, the real things. Uh, next launch was the Broadwell E. So the the during the actually during Computex, the first day of Computex, Intel released the Intel Core i7 6950X. It's a 10 core CPU based on the X99 setup, so LGA 2011. A dash three version of the socket. And today, the top score on XTU is 
3,494 uh, 3, by Azan in Indonesia. Uh, this is a massive score. And this is actually the CPU that all the guys were using at the world tour um, the first week of, uh, of June during the Computex. Uh, I have to say that this CPU is super, super, super pricey. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is this is crazy. Like seventeen seventeen hundred bucks for that CPU. It's like oh my god. It's like who can buy that? Uh... Well, people that. <laughs> well, I mean, people, video, I think people, video, yeah. video uh, creation guys would buy it, but and then then the really top 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 uh, overclockers, but. It just doesn't make sense for anyone else, and Intel prices it so uh, so high because, well, they don't want it fighting with the server chips and the workstation stuff, which is but, just, but yeah. still, uh, from from what I see, and I actually I did ask Intel, but I never get the answer for it. Uh, I asked them, like, okay, are you guys trying to merge like the high-end desktop platform, so that's something that is usually called HE uh, DP. So that's like the super high-end one, like everything that is X99, this kind of chip, and and all that. Are you trying to merge like this one with like the lower end of the Xeons, to have like one segment in between mainstream and server, that is then like something in between, something that used to be in the past because you could use Xeon on the same platform as the other one, and just have uh, some memory like support like ECC and stuff like this. So that was actually super weird because this is like super cheap Xeon. And uh, what was like the the chipset name they tried to launch mainstream that uh, uh, manufacturers were actually showing up at the uh, at the CES, like the not the B chipset but something like like Z, there was like Z170 and there was like another one like C series everything yeah, everything yeah, Xeon is this. supposed to see yeah see yeah, yeah, something the C2010 and 20 uh, and the 210 and 250 it's like. So, so you're making mainstream with Xeon, and you're actually cranking up the. Now it's like cranking up the price. I, I don't of get the it. Yeah, like, I don't get it. I, honestly, I was like, whoa. It's like, okay, maybe you're trying out to test the market. That's one way of doing it. But I, well, that's gonna be interesting to see. Like the 6950X, of course, people will buy it because that's the most powerful CPU on the market. But come on, like the CPU plus the motherboards, like just that is like yeah. two grand. But then, if you want to be kitted with proper memory, like sixty-four gigs or more, then yeah, there you go. Like five five thousand dollar PC with proper cooling in a case. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, actually, I would, I would not mind having that for doing the complete stream when we do the wall tour because that would be super powerful. But yeah, but then, even look right now, like we have like, a we have the previous generation, like fifty-nine sixty. It doesn't go more than four percent. You're rendering on the graphics card anyway, so I mean, like those scores are good if you do, uh, like uh, for live production, it's interesting, but it's it's not doing a uh, it's not doing the cut at least not for us. It's not the limiting uh, factor. But yeah, the limiting factor would be GPU rendering, and uh, for anything that would be high quality rendering, so on the CPU, for example, people that do uh, in the cinema industry 3D renders and things like that, well, those guys are probably already considering. I guess Xeon anyway, right? So I mean, at that yeah. point, um, I don't know. This the CPU is kind of yeah, it's a, a little bit in between. Maybe maybe indie filmmakers thing, things like that. Uh, but yeah, it's very very pricey, very pricey. Yeah, that's that's gonna be crazy. Anyway, we'll see how that goes, and I'm pretty sure some of the overclocker uh, will push it to the limits for sure. Um, last uh, one of the few news: uh, MSI and Asus got caught on rigging and modifying the VGA they sent to the press by actually increasing the frequency they run at, and their claim was that. Uh, the OC mode is enforced and always on because the reviewers not always use the software that is unlocked only by the software. I do actually think this is wrong. Personally, I think this is wrong, but you have to put on the box that if you want to have this OC extra performance, because it's not something you can buy on the... It's not exactly the performance you can have if you buy the yeah. card. And, it's and, like, and it if forces you want... a lot of people to install blow, just like... No, not everybody wants to run the stupid apps always, of which course. just hog and, resources. And... and you have to to put it on the box. Like, if you want this frequency, you have to use yeah. this software. Otherwise, like, oh yeah, you can. Oh yeah, you can. You can do it. Yeah, yes, yes, you can do it. I think oh, uh, yeah, we are back to, to that like, CS like, thing. <laughs> it's all about disclosure in the end. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Back just to say the, the things. To just the say, say the things. That's it. It's as easy as that. <laughs> 
Uh, one of the uh, news from uh, the past few weeks was Futuremark teased a video of an upcoming DirectX 12 uh, bench on the 3 Mark suite. Uh, I don't know if you can see the video on the live, uh, Tim. Yeah, yeah. And this video was, um, this is called Time Spy. So it's the uh, it's the video about uh, it's the so that's going to be the benchmark. So this is not the benchmark. That's just the like that's the render. The render think, yeah. Of, yeah, that's the render, I guess. It's super smooth, so it does that's, look that's really good. Yeah. So someone in the museum trying to look around, and actually, if you know all the other the previous 2D mark, you can see there is actually a you, you reminder. Can see, yeah, there's 2D like mark Easter fire head. strike a bit. There's some uh, cloud gate. I think on that's ice storm. Yeah. yeah, ice storm. Yeah, there's a bit of everything. Yeah, it's going through the ages of three yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, it looks like they're doing a museum of all the 3D mark benchmarks, which is the idea is cool. cool. The idea is cool, and here you have yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Of the yeah. 06 and all that. And I actually like the way that it's not static. It's something moving like the like the the flying the flying benchmark, like the flying test they were doing was actually something that was moving quite fast and that was actually at least interesting to watch. That's not like a rendering something that is well static and just so you have leaves moving yeah. and the temple crashing. I do prefer stuff like this. I actually love the way in the in the previous studio mark like you have the trolls fighting and stuff like this i i still found that it was funny <laughs> <laughs> i never um, use that three d mark <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you're, <laughs> you're, you're spending too heaven much time man. you're there, spending too much time in modifying your hardware yeah do one benchmark find out it's not fast enough mod it kill it can't do any more benchmarks <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that that's that's crazy, man. Um, hey, let's move to the uh, uh, the 480 topics um, because actually we need to uh, to move on a little bit faster. So the power gate issue with the RX 480. Um, Bilzoy, do you want to present what was the issue actually to uh, to all the people on the live? Yeah, sure. Uh, so basically, uh, with the RX 480, uh, a few websites, I think Tom's Hardware was the first to notice that basically right. the card was pulling more power from the PCIe slot than what is uh, specified uh, for the PCIe slot. So the PCIe slot is specced at 75 watts uh, combined for the 12 volt and the 3.3 volt uh, rails that it, it has in it. And the card was pulling something like 82 watts average and peaking into the 150 watt sort of range. Now the peaks aren't really that concerning, but the overdraw uh, caused a lot of controversy because uh, there is a chance that it might maybe kill some really craptastic motherboards. But as far as well, I'm let's concerned, it's that's not... Not gonna hap- that's not going to happen with any of the yeah. top... The, the, the tier, yeah, it, like, the I don't think motherboard. anything, if you buy, like, any Z-series motherboard, like, any Z-series chipset shouldn't shouldn't die. I think there might be some really low-end low end AMD boards where I'd be maybe a little bit concerned. But really, as far as the... As far as the traces in the motherboard are concerned, no issues there. The slot itself, you know, uh, th- those things well, are the built with... The motherboard can sustain more than 75 watts, so yeah, there was yeah. a lot of Way people more. standing about that. Yeah. yeah, so there was a lot of people really worried about burning out traces in the motherboard when, you know, it's like the worst I've ever heard uh, happening with overpowering a motherboard is you burn out the 24 pin. Right, not the, not the traces in the motherboard. So basically the card, the motherboards would always be fine. Uh, there's some concerns about melting or burning down the PCIe slot itself, but those things are built it's with a lot. 165 They're... watts. Come yeah. on, guys. And it's there peak. was people. It's peak. It's like sub one millisecond. The, the thing is, the measuring equipment they were using was a hundred kilohertz. A hundred kilohertz sampling on your current draw. I mean, if you see a 165 watt peak on that, it's it's nothing. It, it's like sub micro you know it's like a microsecond <laughs> it's not going to do anything that's that's the heat output of like what you know it, it might raise the temperature of your of your pcie slot by 0.1 degree so I, it's just like i don't see it as really concerning and i think it was blown way out of proportion but amd should be able to fix it because the way the card has its uh power split uh basically means they can balance the vrm to allocate more power from the six pin instead of from the uh, instead of from the PCIe slot, so they did say yeah. they would so, come yeah. up with a fix, right? Well, 
Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Said yeah. yeah that, that, they said that that's basically what the current uh, speculation by everybody who's messed around with the card is that they'll basically just rebalance the voltage controller to pull more from the six pin. Because half still, of the, the like the the, the dra graphic card is supposed to draw 150 watt, not 165. Yeah, it does 160. Yeah. Well, <laughs> 10 percent. Oh, so, oh my god! god. <laughs> <It's> actually... <laughs> Oh, we're powering stuff. There's actually two issues yeah. there. Um, it's it's promoted as 150 watts VGA when it's actually 165 watts. And the second, yeah. so this is actually not an issue for anyone, basically, yeah. because even if the slot is rated for 75 watts, a motherboard can deliver much more than that. If you plug three yeah. graphic cards, they're gonna have 75 watts, 75 watts, 75 watts. So the motherboard yeah. is not the issue there. So that's why, like, yeah. this was blown out of proportion by so many people there was some misunderstanding the, the gpu itself is 110 watts but it's like oh yeah but how can you have like a, a graphic card that then is like more than 110 watts 110 is just the gpu you have the memory yeah, yeah. you have the power delivery and you lose if you, like power efficiency you always lose um and apparently uh, the fan is rated at 15 watts as well if you crank up the fan it burns 15 watts which well is actually just like, like the fan is 15 watts Maybe the board is fine, just the fan is not. <laughs> just remove the fan. Maybe yeah, just, it, just yeah. remove <laughs> your fan, yeah. Fix. <laughs> fix right there. Um, yeah. That would be hilarious yeah. that the fix is actually just slowing down the fan. <laughs> <laughs> the, the card would heat up, so that wouldn't yes. work that great. Contra contrary to this. <laughs> it's blown out of proportion so bad that yeah. actually AMD got a ton, a ton of news post about that. For a car yeah. that is actually 200 bucks, actually 200 or 250, um, because there's two, uh, two uh, officially yeah. there's two versions for it. Yeah, yeah. well, they're, they're built that... the same way, and you can unlock them <laughs> into the same card. So, yeah, that, that's one of the, the things. So they both ship with eight gigs, uh, eight gig chips, because I don't know. I guess they couldn't find any four gig stuff, or they never thought they'd be selling a four gig version, and then they were like, "Hey, here's an idea. Let's make four gig." So. Well, I think that's uh, that's more what happened. So, um, for for people that don't know what this four and eight gig thing, so there's two version of the 480. One is four gig and one is eight gig. Uh, the four gig is priced at 200 bucks and the eight gig is priced at 250 bucks. And uh, I think that was today or uh, July 6. So yeah, that's actually today. Uh, Tech Power managed to unlock these four gigs extra on the four gig version, so they get. They pay 200 bucks and they get a uh, 8 gig version. Keep in mind, we are at the early time of the launch, and what yeah. I think happened is they did only produce one kind of the card, and have the market at 200 and 250. The reason is the 1060 is rumored to be at 250 bucks as well. So <laughs> AMD can always say we always have a cheaper option for you guys. So well. You know, even if you get like a four gigs card, this is not guaranteed. It's a gig for now. It is yeah. for the first few uh, for the first few ones we have. I'm pretty sure that once we're gonna have like the custom design by the manufacturers, that won't happen. That will maybe, not be maybe, the case. Uh, maybe I'm thinking. Maybe it was just a, a safety or like a, some kind of backup thing they they thought about in case the the all those uh, 1070s and eventually maybe 1060 thing uh, cards would uh, be out there with a very competitive price performance to the 480 for example and they would be like ah, yeah we need a cheaper card uh, so that would be a way to get it and have it ready already quick yeah. quick uh, but i don't know maybe that's just an idea i don't know exactly how it played out i mean we, we saw will... something we saw something similar with the 290X, where uh, at launch there were a lot of 290s that would unlock to a full full 290X, because apparently there weren't enough 290s, so they just took 20 290Xs and BIOS locked them, and people could you know flash a 290X BIOS and it went to a, a full size card. Yeah, so it's maybe just a supply same thing chain thing. For the thing. 480. Yeah, yeah, just just they had too many full full. Uh, they just built eight gig cards and then. And started making four gigs but i do believe that if we're ever going to see custom cards for four four gig custom like custom pcb custom cooler those won't unlock at all Th those will be four gig because straight. they will be made out at four yeah gigs. Th those will be made by the manufacturers and by then the supplies will be sorted so yeah right now the, there, there's a good chance i still wouldn't count 100 percent on it but, but the, as the time goes on it's going to get worse from the same way like the the, oh. the cards actually on the market are all the from the first the first official retail batch, so they are yeah. all done the same way. So it's actually 
more efficient Almost. to do one and just change the BIOS on some. And then there yeah. you have two SKUs for the market rather yeah, yeah. than actually having two production lines separated with different ACs. Yeah, yeah. And this is maybe actually because people say, oh, yeah, but then they losing 50 bucks every time. Well, keep maybe in mind not, that that's actually not. 50 bucks you make of margin. Yeah. yeah. It's always cheaper to do one thing instead of doing several SKUs. Especially yeah. at launch. Especially at launch for the for the first battle, it's always a little bit more uh, expensive. Uh, there was uh, something else I want to talk about for uh, for this like power gate thing. People were, oh yeah, the six pin uh, cannot draw as much as the eight pin. This is actually not true. Uh, usually, actually, the two extra pins are just the ground, so it's not even extra yeah. power. And the yeah. uh, actually that's the video from their Bauer that uh, when they did the the testing like, explaining like their Bauer made a super great video at explaining like all the details while it's like this uh, the the six pin eight pin things like uh, uh, they did actually test uh, overclocking it uh, with like removing the regulation and the power limitation and everything with Elmore and they did that to to explain that well don't expect to have 1700 megahertz on a retail card even if it's coming from a, from a manufacturer this won't happen on the market uh, on the market anytime soon because the card cannot sustain it anyway even with the power limitation removed so yeah that was a, a quite interesting you can uh, we might be able to uh, we will uh, cut uh, and pass the um, the link into the live chat so you guys can go see it and uh, and have this uh, this information and you explain as well like the uh, like the thing for the 75 watts. So all these things was like, oh, I can fry your motherboard. Yeah. This is the framework regulation from the PCI SIG uh, from like framework uh, consortium that says you should not go over this to add the certification. So this is actually more a legal issue for AMD than it is a hardware issue for most of the most of the customer. Yeah. And you built a, you made a video about about that as well, right? Or something. Uh, well, the, no, that I, is, uh, I did a Roman live is stream quoting, with the right? 480. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was quoting me on the. I did a PCB breakdown, just looking at the power delivery and stuff of the card. So, yeah. Uh, he used that to reference for how much power they could push through the VRM before they set it on fire. Uh, they didn't set it on fire, so I did my job well. <laughs> <laughs> I got that right. Yeah. Yeah, but the other thing with the the, the PCIe pins is. Most of the PCIe slot is ground. Like, most of the slot is grounding. And yeah, that's just my first look at it. I don't actually do anything useful in that video. That's a new ground. <laughs> You're talking. <laughs> unboxing video like, that is so popular on YouTube nowadays. Unboxing videos. I don't get how those things, how, how pe like, why people watch those things. Just but, SEO. Hey, they get just I'm going to make them. <laughs> just SEO and keywords. It's like... Yeah. The unboxing yeah. is uh, it's uh, it's like a, it's like a dream for someone that will probably maybe not buy the product. <laughs> it's like oh this is cool <laughs> oh the package is ugly oh oh, oh. <laughs> oh this is some yeah, kind of top so. here you can see it's out of plastic um, there's a fan there yeah oh, kind of quite cool <laughs> it's red Woo. well yeah. that's a good way of spending ten minutes talking yeah. about something you can find out in watching four pictures but it's okay. Well, it's good you're yeah, talking about the no. PCB because most of the time in uh, in unboxing videos, yeah, I, I mean, we're never talking really about the layout. I mean, layout it's not side. that video. I, I do all my PCBs, uh, I do them in paint because I can actually circle stuff instead of yeah, trying actually, to desperately point stuff out. Yeah, actually, the videos are awesome. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> the videos are awesome. It's like, it's like these, like, overclocking explain with paint. You actually have nice skills in paint. Yeah, <laughs> very nice skills. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That was good. Uh, I mean, for someone that wants to learn I, I need to redo. I need to redo some of those. I need to redo some of those. Uh, one of them is slightly wrong on some of the physics. So, yeah, I'm not an electrical engineer by trade. Okay, I'm a programmer, and I use a lot of Google. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, you can check um, everything uh, on your channel, right? So, the name of the yeah, channel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't have a name for your channel. You have a UC uh, something something. Uh, no, no, reason? it should actually, it should actually get, uh, at this point, it should have the... Actually, hardcore uh, overclocking. <laughs> yeah, that should actually work. Yeah, okay. Let me just check. I, I think I activated it some time ago, but I don't know if it's... Well, we'll post the link in, in the live chat anyway, so, and focusing yeah, a little it, bit more... Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, we'll <laughs> just post the link, that's, that'll be okay. <laughs> There's a lot of guys uh, tuning in, and some of your fans as well, Bizoid, from I guess from the from the Reddit team. 
there's a floppy biscuit that say, hey, Bilzoid, I want to give a super, super big shout out to someone special on the live chat, Droid Insanity. Thank you very much. You're actually our first official subscriber for our Twitch channel. This is actually something we activated just a few hours ago. And you're the very first one. Yay! Congrats. The very actually, first one and also do. the one that watches the most hours of stream. So. Yeah. <laughs> actually, like, do we have a t-shirt for the guy? Uh, we have so some more CTV t-shirts. Uh, we need to make a new batch of the Keep Pushing It t-shirts as well. Because some guys couldn't get it last time. So I have to look into that. So yeah, Dread Insanity, we're gonna send you uh, a t-shirt because you're the very first one and uh, on the, clicking the sub button. Thank you, yeah! Uh, so let's focus on you, Bilzoid. So yeah, we talk, uh, We said you're from uh, Czech Republic, you're now living in the UK for your studies, right? Yep, yeah, study. So what are you, uh, computer... yeah, computer oh. science? Yeah, computer systems engineering. So it's mostly computer science with a little bit of hardware. So yeah, and yeah, I'm studying that for a bachelor's, so I'm staying in the UK for two more years. I wanted to stay here much longer, but... <laughs> Man, you have to get out of the um... you're not you're into Europe anymore, you have to get out. Yeah. <laughs> let's, not, let's not open the Brexit discussion, please. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, I didn't even name it, you know, you can't blame me if you bring it up. <laughs> just saying. So, um, yeah, so... That's that. But hopefully, I, you know, depending on how things evolve, I want to stay in the UK because, well, I speak English better than Czech for a variety of reasons. And yeah, so. Well, actually, your, your English is perfect. And uh, actually, we did discuss like two days ago over Skype. And that was a, like, I can't even, like, if I didn't knew you were from Czech Republic, I would have never found that out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So you're the so you so you're the captain of the uh, overclocking team on Reddit. So actually, there's yep. a big shout out to the guys on the live chat because there are a lot of guys on the live chat from that team. Um, so how did that happen? How did you end up on the uh, on the subreddit and 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 gear up from that? So uh, slash r slash overclocking existed before I turned up. So yeah, uh, I basically found the subreddit. And at the time it was, well, it's, right now it's still mostly an overclocking help desk, <laughs> which, as far as, <laughs> you know, it's just... There's nothing bad about that. Like, <laughs> it's not, not bad, but, you know, I'd like to see some more exciting content sometimes. So at the time I was like, okay, th this, this help desk thing is, is, it's too much. And I said, we need a wiki. And basically the, the moderators at the time said, okay, um, you're now a moderator too, go take care of the wiki. Um, so that's how the slash r slash overclocking wiki got started. And we, yeah, and that went on for a bit. And then I thought, you know what, let's, let's get a hardware bot team. And everybody was cool with that. So now we have a hardware bot team and yeah, I'm in charge of it. And it's mostly uh, rookie and novice as far as I'm aware uh, right now. So we're actually pretty. You're like, actually pretty, pretty good, especially in the yeah. uh, on the novice uh, on the novice symbol. You usually yeah, end up in the novice. top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, uh, we're going to be going uh, pretty heavy on the team cup. Uh, <laughs> it'll be actually my first team cup. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll try pretty hard for the team cup. So, because I actually never really did uh, the t like I benched for tech power up in the past, but it wasn't really, uh, I don't know, it wasn't, I, I wasn't really that heavily in, invested in it. You know, I sort of just did my own thing with a 290X at the time and the rest of the team did team things. So, yeah, so now, now it's, uh, yeah, now I'm more focused on the team and, and the submissions. Guys, if you don't have a Skylake, don't submit on Windows 10. Please save me the time. It's just, yeah. yeah. And we so, had a little cut, guys, but we are back. We were just talking about the kicking out frenzy. So you are apologizing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to anybody that I uh, accidentally deleted your score if it was on Windows 10. Though I don't think there were that many accidents. But then again, I was pretty liberal. <laughs> so who knows? <laughs> Well, uh, that's uh, that's uh, quite an important like uh, quite an important team. Uh, do you have any plan to uh, to do something with the guys from the from the slash r slash pc master race? Um, so r slash pc master race 
is this weird place where you can't really predict how it's going to go with anything you try to do. Well, it usually <laughs> goes sideways, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> usually you don't get anywhere. Um, the most success I had trying to post there was uh, 8 gigahertz on the FX9590. That went well. But as far as getting people into competitions and stuff, yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't really work. So, because r slash PC Master Race is mostly, well, I guess memes and uh and then just it's gaming funny. it's it's very gaming oriented as a subreddit and, and yeah just jokes and you know wasting time so uh the whole overclocking thing doesn't catch on very easily there um mm. but there's some other subreddits where you know some people are more interested in it so well we'll uh that's, that that would be interesting to see if uh, if they catch up because most of them are actually PC gamers and you know yeah, they yeah, all yeah. have good computers so why not bench it huh? yeah I mean I mean yeah why not bench it it would really uh, help with lifting up some of the less popular hardware on hardware bot because it's really top heavy I feel like you see a lot of the top end graphics cards really overrepresented for hardware points and then you see like 960s and stuff and nobody uses it even though they're really popular cards yeah, so I you think have this it's weird a... skew it's like the generic uh, kind of behavior of always targeting the top scores and then forgetting that, yeah, you know, if we are more at the low ones, we also get a lot of points. We just need to all move there a little bit more. Yeah, well, if the... everybody started benching 960s, it'd be worth as much as any other card. Nobody does it. <laughs> and, it's, and it's cheap as well. It's super cheap. It's and that's so something... much cheaper. And that's something yeah. you can do, like all the trying out the Vimo, trying out like uh, looking up at the hardware. Yeah. Um, so, so you did like a stream for the uh, for the 480, like the RX 480, and you were explaining yeah, yeah. like, okay, I want to do this, and you actually like, we're benching is like, okay, I stop and remove the card and did the cats mode right away. It's like, what? <laughs> what the I, hell? I... I was re like, okay, so with the live streams, I go really, re like, I push myself to go extremely fast compared to what I would normally do. So a lot of stuff, I mean, it's not like I go do stuff wrong on the live streams, but juggling the camera, thinking about bolt modding, and, uh, yeah, and actually benching at the same time, it takes a lot of work and, you know, just cramming it all together. I wanted to even go as far as doing uh, core voltage mods, but those on on that voltage controller, it's just not worth it. And plus, I'm working on a BIOS right now, so I'd rather just get everything working from the BIOS because it's much safer. So and and you were actually already streaming for four hours, so <laughs> yeah, I was, <laughs> it was like quite late in the evening as well. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I started at six, and I think I went till like eleven. I think the plan was so. Yeah, it was a it was a long stream. So I do actually have more planned for the 480. Um, and are you trying yeah, to, so, to stream like more regularly, like maybe like once a week? I, I really want to do once a week, but a lot of the time it's just finding stuff that works or is interesting to do because you know it's like uh, sometimes I just go and I try to bench something like a CPU benchmark and it's basically just sitting there rebooting, 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 rebooting. Oh, it booted. Go get to the operating system, check how much RAM is available and find out that the motherboard didn't initialize half my memory sticks. So we go and reboot <laughs> again. <laughs> it's like, oh, yay, motherboard. How cooperative of you, you know? I can always rely on you. So... Well, yeah. that 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 yeah. was fun. I did watch the stream for uh, I think like a, like a good hour, just uh, you no know, sticking yeah. around and asking and like answering the the question from the people and so on. That was that was fun. Um, but it's fun to see that you're actually like trying to do everything at once as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I had LN2, that card would have ended up on LN2 eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, I forgot to get get a get my last refill. So LN2 next week. I must so, not forget that. So what's your I channel's address for people interested? Uh, uh, just uh, Twitch slash Buildzoid. So build. So Twitch.tv forward slash Buildzoid. I uh, will pass yeah. the link in the like chat. All right, that's done. Um. Talking back to you, so that was for the stream, so uh, guys can expect you to do a stream anytime soon. And uh, you had a lot of uh, video analysis. You analyzed like the PCB, you explained everything, how it works. Um, that, that is actually uh, quite interesting, even for me to watch. 
uh, this is something you can uh, like if you're interested into going into a little bit deeper in the v in the in the hardware you can actually uh, check it out you have like the pcb analysis you have like the explain explain it with paint this one is awesome the, this is this is i love it but i just watch it just for fun it is funny it's, yeah um that that is um i will be on yeah that that series was supposed to sort of combine more comedy into the rather serious uh stuff i usually deal with so yeah I, I i want to try dropping more jokes in there but sometimes it's just like i need to get the point across and and paint works you know so why would i use anything else Everybody keeps complaining in the comments that I should stop using MS Paint. Well, it's here to stay. Yeah, that's it's a great software. It's a great software. What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it starts up instantly. I don't have to deal with anything. It's like for image editing and stuff, I obviously use something else. But when I just want to scribble something, it's Paint works. And yeah, that video right there, that, that one's getting reworked that you're showing right now on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> that that one I plan to get. That one's that one's getting axed and replaced. So there's a few, yeah, mess like ups in that. Like like mess up, yeah. But actually, you do yeah. everything with the with just the the mouse. You don't have like a like a drawing actually, board. Actually, no, 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 no. I do <laughs> have. So for for explained with paint, I use this here. Oh yeah. Right. So just a drawing tablet. But for for the show it again. Show it again. I show it again. What? Yeah. Can you show so it again? I use a drawing tablet for all yeah. of explained with paint stuff, right? So yeah, and this is like three or four years old now. I think it was like a hundred bucks when I got it, maybe less. And for all the PCB analysis, I just use a mouse because I use a really d low DPI setting from all of the you know shooter <laughs> shooter gameplay. So yeah. Um, so the PCB analysis that's just done with a mouse, and then all the explained with paint that's done with a drawing tablet because you're not that it, it would be a horrible mess otherwise yeah i was I like know. if you do that with the mouse that's actually super impressive <laughs> i'd be like top 10 for aiming in anything <laughs> and then and yet you choose to do overclocking what's wrong <laughs> I like also how you make the tables. You know, you could just open Excel on the side, <laughs> but it's cool. It's cool. It's I don't really, have Excel. I love the style. It's, like, <laughs> it's like no, because I used to do. I I mean, I really love whiteboards. Like I just love whiteboards, right? You need to plan something. Use a freaking whiteboard to do it. Yes. But whiteboards take up a lot of space, and then paint is just like well, if you just stretch the thing, it'll be like a whiteboard. <laughs> infinite whiteboard so yeah. yeah i just go with paint because it works and it's you know i don't need, need to deal with anything and during really insanity cool, to say cool. like that was paint it looks so good i showed that was cry engine 4 alpha <laughs> <laughs> oh boy um so let's uh let's close it on 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 that um as someone that is quite new to this like overclocking scene because it's less than it's just a few years you are actually doing overclocking seriously right yeah 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 I mean, I only and first built my PC in 2011, or well, 2012, early 2012. So, so. it's less than five years. Um, yeah. So, for, for like Timote and me, it's been like more than more than 12 years that we're actually in this industry for. So we have like one vision for it. Um, but when you hear about uh, something that is called competitive benching or competitive overclocking, what does that express to you? Um, to me. Um... I don't know really. I mean, I just like tweaking systems, <laughs> you know, just making stuff. Uh, I don't know. Always been sort of into the just taking something and fine tuning it. Um, and I mean, this reflects in just the games I play and everything. So, you know, I wouldn't. Well, yeah. Uh, and so w when the. So I got into overclocking because I saw. At the time, I think it was a 3960X uh, frequency record for just that, for, for the 3960X. And I was just like, whoa, this is awesome. And this is actually like reasonably within reach for somebody like me. So, because it's not as ridiculous as say like car racing or something, which at the time I was really into. I loved cars at the time, you know, I was really into cars. But yeah, this much safer, <laughs> much less likely to get myself killed. Because I wasn't really like, and, and so I was just like, yeah, let, let's, because um, it's like a combination of science 
and then uh, yeah it's basically like this it's very much just science based as far as i'm concerned well more like scientific method there's not that much science to it and but in the, the end anyway are... you, you you spend all your money in there so <laughs> <laughs> that's almost the same issue in the end <laughs> in the end yeah but you can get more stuff done here so yeah, yeah and so it's it's less dangerous for sure less dangerous and the parts are way cheaper it's like if you wanted a car it starts at you know like a lot higher than you know if you don't go super expensive like most of the stuff i bench on liquid nitrogen it's amd because amd is super super cheap right yeah. for for cpus and especially now that i'm in the uk uh getting just like old phenoms and athlons and everything it's super easy i can get like you know a truckload of phenom two chips two cores for three pounds a chip i mean so wh when are you doing the uh i reached the eight gigahertz the uh, challenge uh so i mean i already got eight gigahertz next up i want to try 8.2 you know but it depends on if the fx 9590 can pull it off it'll also be a good test for the new motherboard i'm using so yeah that's that. I mean, I'm so far really, really happy with the Gigabyte uh, 990 FX board that I'm using, but uh, that, that'll probably be the first thing I do after my LN2 gets here, because I don't think I'll be ready to do any GPUs by then, yet. You still have a lot of uh, mod modification to do and uh, find out the, uh, the No, no, no. I mean, I, there's, I want to just try putting a GPU on LN2 without any, like, mods or anything. Just, just put it on LN2 to figure out how that works, because... You know, you need to get your insulation game and everything covered before you can start doing the more advanced stuff. So I need to first figure out how to just get a GP running at minus 50 degrees. Then I'll worry about getting it running fast. Because <laughs> I, I, I've had a few screw-ups with insulation and basically then it's like the system craps out in 30 minutes and why would I, why would I actually bother, you know, so... Yeah, indeed. And uh, as uh, as you said, you actually love to bench AMD because it's cheap. And this is it, guys. It it doesn't matter if it's the best core ever on the scoreboard. What is important is it's the best core you can do with the hardware you have. And this is something that, you know, if reaching out the top score is something that some people in the league can do it. It requires a lot of time and a lot of funding to do it. But you can do it with anything that you have. You always have like a, a margin on your VGA, on your memory, on your on your CPU. You always have a margin for it. So just use it. Just go for it. Try out for it. And you don't have to reach for the top score. The fun is you try to be the the, the most efficient and the uh, the fastest with the system that you have uh, you have in hand. Uh, well, thank you, Blizzard, for for your time here today and and tonight. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have more information about you in the next few streams you will be doing. Uh, actually, I will be uh, maybe watching one of them, especially if you get the LN2. I want to see what uh, what you will do with it, and I want to see actually your first VGA uh, coding done to see like where you could actually like oh I forgot to put like these things on. It's like I insulate everything. It's like oh I forgot the power plug. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this I is something the that monitor could happen, huh? every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time tonight. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in tonight. Big shout out to Droid Insanity, that is our first subscriber. And second big shout out to Massman at HWBot, that is the second big subscriber. Uh, Massman, you already have the t-shirt. And actually, you can just... Uh, uh, Timothy will, uh, will come and, 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 and shake your hands because you're actually pretty much in the same office today. So... So that will be quite uh, qu quite easy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we can even go on the we can even go in the studio to 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 be on the live then. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. Don't forget subscribe to the Twitch channel to uh, to have more information when we go live next week for the next uh, OC show or in the next few weeks. In two weeks from now, Timote, what will be the next event? We're going to the US, right? Yeah, we're going to um, the U.S. Summer Gathering, which is going to take place uh, in Pennsylvania. I'm not really good with the U.S. geography, but uh, so I'm going to fly first uh, to Montreal and then ride uh, down um, with you over there to, to a small road trip. Um, and there we're going to meet most of the guys from the U.S. community and some Canadians uh, from the East Coast that are also traveling there for the occasion. Um, the meetup is uh, sponsored by Corsair that pays for all the LN2. Uh, you know, also HDI about it sending some goodies there that I will be delivering myself. Um, 
And the point is just to have fun with LN2 for a whole weekend, so that's going to be pretty cool. The guys rented out some uh, hotel conference uh, room, or some big room, and um, that's going to be pretty epic. So that's uh, one thing that is going to happen in the next two weeks, and we'll be there uh, with you, Truth, to do some testing for the stream. So what we want to do is to have some fun with new streaming concepts. Uh, so this year we introduced the one versus one mainly in the world tour as a kind of a new way of doing competitive or see what we want to try now as to how to make it a bit more entertaining and also more fun for the guys. Uh, we had some crazy ideas uh, in the line of uh, you have three lives and you lose a life every time you have a blue screen or stuff like that, you know. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities of making it really fun. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be interesting or not, but uh, it's going to be for sure a lot of fun. Well, so if you guys sure want to see, be fun. <laughs> if you want to see the that's future of competitive or see, as a entertainment, you can uh, join the stream on those days. It's going to be hilarious, I think. So if you guys want to see everything in uh, in the actually as because that was never done before. So if you want to see everything in the first place, uh, you can subscribe to our Twitch channel here. Uh, press the follow button right there. And you can also follow us on uh, Facebook if you're watching the replay on YouTube because uh, you actually arrived too late on the on the live and you say, I want to talk about the RX 480. We did talk about that in this video, so you can just go uh, watch it on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, let us uh, uh, comment on the under the video if you have any questions for uh, any of us three and Bigzoid. And of course, uh, we will find you back for the next episode of the OC show that will be recorded mostly for a, a publication next week. Is that right, Tim? Correct. This is correct. Thank you very much, guys, for tuning in tonight. It's been a pleasure. I'm Trufman from Overclocking TV. Tonight was I was joined by uh, Xiala from OC TV and Bilzoid from the uh, slash r slash Overclocking team on Reddit. Thank you very much for being here. And until next time, keep pushing, keep pushing it. it. Okay.